and then it get them down. And that's why I ran into you was at his head studio in East Rio with Rob. So tell us about how you sign those days, you know, you book those days and what the kind of the plan was going into it. Well, I was dealing with a lot of emotion going into it and, and it was Mark McEntee, the Divinals guitarist, who's a, been a friend of mine for about 20 years, but we haven't done any music together and a little bit, but when I played it to him, he was, he, you know, said, hey, you, he sent me there, you know, he'd go to this place and see what you like and da-da-da. And he was going to come there that time, but he got, a little, he got a little bit ill. And I was glad he didn't because it was too much of a new experience for me. That's mm. big league what I was doing there, you know? Yep. And it was a learning experience and I really had a great time. Didn't, didn't get, haven't, haven't got much, we're, we're, go, we're going there after this and we're, you know, hopefully salvage some music out of it, but I don't, not worried. I had, I learned so much. You know? Yeah, recording studios are really crazy places, hey, because you're sort of in there, there's no windows. You've got Rob Grant, who's a really well thought of producer, you know, one of the greats in, in this part of the world, sitting in the other room going, yep, hit it. <laughs> there's a lot of pressure there. So, you know, there was three guys kind of looking at each other going, now what do we do, you know? like And, and, and you could see you all manifest that anxiety in different ways, you know? Well, we're great live. Right, we're mm. a great, and I just thought we could go in there and just record these songs live. But yeah. that's not how it works in a recording studio. You got to put the beat down first, and then the bass, and then the guitar, and then it's like, and do all this without the vocals. You know, you're just imagining it in your head. And because I'm on acoustic guitar, and that's mic'd up, you know, you can't sing or anything because that'll fuck up the recording. Yeah. So it was like fuck. And then I've never played for nine hours straight from a guitar. <laughs> the next day, my fingers were burning I couldn't do it and then um, it was just like learn so much I won't you know yeah yeah hey I won't be the guitarist or somebody <laughs> I don't know yeah but it was great fun though and what did it feel like getting those things that you'd stored up you know you said you had guilt and having those songs and you know sort of like knowing that you weren't going to might not do anything unsure about it and then got the prompt to do it what was it like finally getting them out of your system it was quite a laugh, you know, especially at the end one when it ended up on the piano anyway, and it was all comical and, and it, it was a great release. Yeah. Yeah. That was a great moment. Let's delve into that a bit. So I think I was fixing my camera, I was doing something or other, and you were just kind of mucking around and you jumped on the piano. Tell us like a little bit what happened. Well, I just said to Rob, I said, well, shit, you know, because we'd done a couple of takes, you know, try with the guitar, but it's not, it's, we're not playing it the way it's going in my head, you know, I'm not happy with it, right? And you know, I have a lot of other licks and ideas in my head as well, but I need to talk to Mark about that and all. But it was just like, I said to Rod, I wrote the thing on the piano anyway. So, and so I just jumped on the piano and started playing a couple of other tunes and then went into that. And he started duetting with it and fooling around. And I must admit, I do listen to it a bit because it's a, um, got a certain bit of rock about it that maybe it might become a piano tune orientated. Maybe it should be, I suppose. Well, that actually blew my face off because, you know, I'd, I'd heard sort of at that point I'd heard your story and I'd said you'd been playing guitar and that kind of thing. And then to have that much talent to get on a piano and play at that style, like that intent was something that I hadn't really seen before. You know, you could tell Rob was into it. He's trying to lean over your shoulder and do the melodies up the top and stuff like that. So that was a lot of energy. So you've clearly got like a talent that, did you know you've always had that, you know, as a kid, was it something you were born with? It's something that, you know, you've, you know, obviously kids out of the box, they kind of, you can pick them, right? Like, it's interesting you say it, but well, I, I, I just did go through a stage where piano was my main instrument, but it's a bit hard to lug a piano around to a gig, right? So you just, you know, go onto the guitar. It's easier. Yeah. But yeah, one of my school friends came to a, a, a gig about 10 months ago and he said to me, David, what are you fucking around on the guitar for? You, you should be playing your keyboards, man. Yeah. <laughs> And you see what Rob's got in that studio? He's got like old Prophet Fives. He's got all these like Moogs and stuff yeah. like that. It was just like heaven for that analog gear, hey? Yeah. Yeah, so good. So what's the next step for you guys or for you personally? I want to go back and get these two songs down promptly. Yeah. Get something that I'm happy with and then, yeah, release it out there. Yeah. Have you got more stuff sorted up or, you know, are you sleeping peacefully now that you got them out of your system? Mm, well, it's interesting you say that because... In yeah, in the last few weeks, a, a few more have popped in. I haven't written them down or anything, but I'm just aware they're there. Yeah. And 
a couple of them repeatedly come back to me. So it's uh, something that it, 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 it's bizarre because for, you know, I dreamed of being a, you know, to write music as a kid. And I thought, how the fuck can they even remember the words, you know, let alone, but when one comes to you and you write it, it's just there. Yeah. You just, <laughs> and I watched an interesting thing that this, uh, yesterday that popped up on my phone. It was Paul McCartney being interviewed by Jay Leno or something, I think. And he, and, and he, and he said the same thing. He said, that they just, you know, they come to you and you, you, you think, and then he said, now when I promise, he says, I th- geez, the guy who wrote this was pretty good. <laughs> There's that many of them there for him. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And if you don't write them down, they go sometimes, hey. And yeah. you go, what was that riff? Like the amount of times that you're up all night playing a riff, mm-hmm. and you're like, this is some gold. This is going to be a winner. This is going to like really like get the crowd going. Yeah. And then you go, all right, cool. That's it. Go to bed. Wake up in the morning and be like, shit, how does it go? Like you need, if you didn't record that, it's gone forever. Absolutely. And that's what I've got to get into the habit of because I will sit there and play one and think I'm doing, but I don't record them. Yeah. And yeah. so, but I'm, a, I'm wrestled because at first when I wrote this first song, I thought, what? Can I only write one song, two songs? Is that all I'm going to do, two songs? Mm. How the fuck? Uh, da, 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 da. Nah. You got more in. And Well, Paul McCartney, he, what he said in this interview was he said all, all through his early life, he just played these songs with his dad and around the piano and all the rest of it, and they're embedded in his head, and his head just becomes like a computer, and then they all come out. And I went, bingo. I used to sit there with headphones on, earplugs in, listening to them, and it's all coming there and that's all coming out, you know, yeah. backwards twisted around or whatever. And I've, I'm, a, I'm happy with that. You've got like kind of a nice gravelly, like, like you can just hear it in your talking voice even. Well, I've been thinking about that a lot in the last couple of months and I always look on the positive side of things and the one, the, one of the good positives of going to church every day is singing the hymns. Okay. So if that developed my voice to give me this now, well... Well, I'm good, you know. Yeah, I've I've dealt with a lot of the shit that they've dealt with me, so I'll, I'll take the good voice with it. That's the flip side. Now, what would you say to anyone else that might be listening to this? Might have snuck in a radio and is in a situation like that that, that does love music. Look, you just got to follow your dreams, don't you? You just got to. You're always going to get whacked from pillar to post, but yeah, just get up again. And it's not about how big the hole is that you dig. It's about how you get yourself out of it, I suppose. So we all. You know, we've all been having a fairly tough time in the last few years, but I think there's a, I, j- I think just generally worldwide in, in every movement, everybody's waking up. You know, the the way that information goes out nowadays, I mean, like these podcasts, for instance, it's not just a mainstream media that's told to say what they, hey, you can say what you freaking like on it, right? Mm-hmm. And people will take what they like from it. You know, you don't have to, you know, for everybody that believes what, I say, well, there'll be just as many don't believe what I say, right? So it doesn't fucking matter. And for me even, shit, I might change my ideas on what I've talked about today, tomorrow. Yeah. That's the beauty of life. Yeah, learning. Learning. Learning and growing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And accepting that you're fucking wrong a lot of the times. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, David, it's been great talking to you and it's quite a remarkable story and I can't wait to see what comes, comes from it. Cool. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the Stories Within Stories podcast. We hope you've enjoyed the show. For more stories like this, head to barefootmedia.co.